the latest mod to the wrong foo. I don't know about you guys, but to lock the table, I hate reaching under here because I grease my my lead screw with molybdenum disulfide grease and every time I reach under that thing to turn one of these little stupid screws to lock the table in the Y direction I get filthy so I decided I was gonna fix that and here's what we've got. All right, so now I can lock my table with this little lever right here. And let me tell you, it works really good and I don't have to get dirty anymore. So there you go, another mod. Basically, I can't really tell you dimensions for this thing because it's all crazy. I think they just hand drill these two holes. They don't seem to be centered on anything and they're two, on my machine, they're 2.15 inches center to center. Now what I did do was I, you know, I, what happens here is, I'll take this apart and show you, but there's basically the screw that goes in here is a 51618 and then I have this rod that brings all this lever action stuff out past the casting and the way you phase these because these are keyed on here is to adjust these little nuts here to control how far the screws push in when you jack this up like this. But this works really good because my table is really locked here. And it's, I mean, it's like, you know, one finger to get it going because of the leverage. So let me take this apart and show you the pieces. Well, I didn't record a whole lot of this. I wasn't going to record any of it, but this part's kind of interesting. <clears throat> um, what i got to do is uh, cut these out. And, um, you know, I'm not making rocket parts here, but I want to, uh, you know, do a good job. So what I'm going to do is, um, you know, I've uh, figured out my center to center distance and I drilled the holes and I drew, you know, before I drilled them I drew radii around here and I connected up the tangents so now we got to figure out how to machine this and what I'm going to do first is get out a protractor and figure out what that angle is okay so what I did here is I put this on the side, you know, I know that I machine these blocks square, so I know that all this stuff is good here. And I just slid this up and adjusted it until I get parallel with that layout line. And turns out it's 11 degrees. So we're going to set that up in the vise at 11 degrees, start milling it off. All right, we're back. I decided that I was going to cut some of this uh, waste stock off of here. So I got them, you know, roughly aligned. I mean, there's plenty of uh, plenty of milling meat left there, but, um, you know, we're going to lop off within like about a sixteenth of the line. And I'm only going to do one side. I'm going to leave this side alone because this is our reference side for setting up that 11 degree angle. So what I'll do is I'll cut this off, I'll set them up in the vise at 11 degrees, I'll mill them perfect, then I'll flip them over and we'll use this as the reference side and do the included angle of 22 on this side and it ought to be pretty good. And then uh, the next thing is I'm going to put them on the rotary table and cut these radii here. So. Um,
stay tuned. And then, oh, and one last thing is we're going to have to do is broach a keyway in these. So um, we'll be back. Okay, so I finished cutting these. And with this particular one, I was very careful to line up the saw kerf with the blade and you know with the line so I left the line but here's the piece that came off and it's an 11 degree wedge so this is what we're going to use to set this up in the vise okay okay so what I did here so I got a couple parallels in here and then I put the wedge in, you know, I cleaned it up, I deburred it and stuff, and then uh, I put the piece in here. So now you can see this part we got to mill off is level, so we'll just mill it down right to the line. So this is how we're cutting the slot in the end. We got one of them done here already. So you can kind of see that. So we'll just continue on and get this one done like that too. Okay, so we're almost halfway through here. And um you know, by doing it this way, you get the uh, you get the correct radius for this. So that's why I'm cutting it this way instead of in the milling machine with a flat bottom. Okay, so here we go. This is the part that screws in and jams up against the gib. And this this is a 5 16 18, same thread that came with the machine. But it threads up in here pretty far. And this nut, this jam nut, allows you to adjust how far out the screw is because these shafts are keyed and they have to be, you know, working in unison. So the way this goes together is I got a snap ring here and then, you know, I got this piece here which, you know, I showed earlier how to make it. Here's the key. And then I got this washer that goes over here that keeps the key in place. And then there's a screw that screws into the end of this shaft to hold everything together. So let me put it together again. The other one is very similar except it doesn't have this handle and this cutout washer. It just has a regular washer. So let me uh, put it together and show you how it works one more time. Okay, so the first thing you got to do is screw this thing in. And when it bottoms out, you can't really see it, but there's the key is on the bottom. Okay, and that's how you adjust it. You turn, you turn this nut here and the screw until 
you get both of these, you know, synced. Okay, and then this piece goes on. And then there's a little little key you gotta get. I gotta put the camera down for a second to get the key in. Hang on. Okay, so I got the key in right there. And now this washer. Okay, so that gets screwed in there. Okay, so now I got this little link bar that is the same center to center distance as as the other, as the two uh, shafts here. And that's what links them together. So I got myself a shoulder bolt that goes in and like that. And now you can see they both move together. So there you go. Another little tip for the owners of the wrong foo. You don't like getting your hands dirty, sticking it under the table. You can add a little lever here. And it doesn't really modify the machine at all, because if you really want to, you can deal with this crap. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so here's a final look at it with all the proper bolts and nuts and hardware installed. Um, on the bottom, I got two hardened shoulder bolts that all this stuff swivels on. And then a uh, top Allen, um, button head Allen, screws, quarter 20s. So there you go, that's the story. Pick it up, forget it. Alright. So there's a little tip for all you wrong foo owners out there who hate getting their hands dirty. Thanks for watching.